India has a spectacular landscape and habitat which gives unlimited choices and myriad opportunities for the undaunted enterprising and adventurous to go mountaineering, rock climbing or explore the subcontinent's rich natural heritage without disturbance to the fragile ecosystem. We have here in our midst today one indomitable son of India, Hari Dung Padma Shri, an eminent mountaineer and Himalayan wildlife expert and a prominent educationist. He has often been described as the headmaster's headmaster and the environmentalist's environmentalist. He went to the Rio Earth Summit recently as a delegate and is presently chief editor of Sustainable Development, an international journal of global environment, conservation and development. His gallant and intrepid sense of adventure manifested itself in early childhood. In school, a village factory school run by the Gwalior Sindhya Potteries, now on Ring Road, then in the middle of the New Delhi forest, he learned to trap and shoot partridges, quails and hare with the help of Gujar villages of Humayunpur. The rest of the 11 years of schooling was at modern school Delhi and he graduated with chemistry honours from St. Stephen's College, Delhi. After a brief stint as a tea planter in Assam and a journalist with Statesman, he joined the Dune School where he taught for 12 years. He took over as principal of Air Force Central School, Subrotha Park, Delhi Kant in 1970 and was there for seven years. He was awarded the Padma Shri at that time for his contribution to education and youth services. He was rector St. Paul School, Darjeeling for another, another seven years. From 1984, he was principal of Army Public School for five years. As an educationist, he has contributed substantially to the framing of the education policy at various stages and is author of the book, Implementation of the New Education Policy. I've really enjoyed school teaching and teaching children, boys and girls, ever since 1958 when I became a teacher at the Dune School there at Dune. Of course, it was a privileged kind of teaching, though we were very underpaid, but we really enjoyed our work and we enjoyed learning more and more about many subjects. I remember I joined as a teacher of chemistry and one day the headmaster asked me, to, could I take over next term uh, teacher, teach, as teacher of English? And I said, yes. So I had to learn English grammar all over. And then I went on to geography and physics and French and history at times. But it was a great uh, excitement and a profession which I, I, we found very exciting. And how's your experience been since you've been involved in four public schools? From? Well, I mean, I taught at the Dune School for 12 years. Then I was principal of the Air Force School, Subrotha Park, for nearly eight years. And then as rector St. Paul School, Darjeeling, for seven years. And at the Army Public School on a five-year contract stayed off a little longer. I've uh, enjoyed teaching at these well-organized public schools and I've enjoyed improving these schools, their academic results and extracurricular activities of the students. Uh, and uh, what I would really like to do and like to have done more would have been to do something on a larger scale for all the 65,000 secondary schools, higher secondary schools of India. Because that is where uh, we, we need to improve. You involved youth services uh, when you were in these schools? Yes, one of my aims was, in fact, to uh, Indianize the Duke of Edinburgh's award, which uh, I had uh, imp implemented at 14 schools in Dehradun for outward bound activities and village and community services as social welfare. And then we made it the Indian Youth Award Scheme, uh, and the Ministry of Education accepted it, uh, and I handed it over to my old students. Mandeep Singh Soin is still running it, but it got Indianized in a different manner. It became the Indian award uh, for youth work in a slightly more uh, social and political manner rather than in a more educational school level manner. And what about recently have you climbed some peaks or are you still keeping up your yeah, adventurous nice. spirit? Exciting expedition I had last year was with the Indo-American University expedition to Black Peak. All the members climbed it. I had to go as advisor because of various reasons. One of them being that uh, my wife who was suffering from pulmonary arterial hypertension stroke after 1988, though she's kept it up very bravely. And she's a headmistress also, founder headmistress of many schools. Uh, Mrs. Renu Kadang uh, uh, insisted that I go with, as advisor to this expedition because her son, that's our son, Rupin Dang, 
was a member. And just before that month of June, um, in the month of April or was it May, uh, Homi Talyar Khan had lost his son in ex an expedition, which I tried to help with. I used to help with rescue and evacuation from the Indian Mountaineering Foundation. But we sent a number of helicopter sorties and experts, but couldn't retrieve him from the crevasse. So I had to go on this Indo-American expedition. It was very successful. I really enjoyed it. You've been a Himalayan wildlife expert also. So what is, have you encountered any wildlife during your mountaineering expedition? Well, it all began with shikar, actually. I was very fond of hunting up in the high mountains in the snow area, above the timber line, above the snow line. The blue sheep, the ibex, the musk deer, the thar, the goral, the snow leopard, and the red bear, and the pheasants, and the snow cock. But in the 1950s and the early 60s, I gave up progressively hunting any endangered or rare species, and finally gave up hunting altogether. And I started the wildlife, uh, the Himalayan Wildlife Research Project, and we also started under Maharaja Naba and uh, R. L. Holdsworth and S. S. Negi at Dehradun, the Wildlife Preservation Society of India, of which the journal Chital, C H W -E T A L, is how we spelt it, and still continues. I was the editor of that. Then you were a delegate to the Rio conference recently. What has been the fallout and especially where India is concerned? Well, after 22 years of headmastering, uh, including rectorship at St. Paul's School, Darjeeling, and uh, the Army Public School, after 34 years of teaching, I decided to do a lateral arabesque in which I wanted to move from education and communication, which was what I was doing, into environment and development. And that I did in 1989, in fact, we started the concept of the International Journal of Sustainable Development from the Third World from New Delhi. And this is the first time that a high caliber international environment and development journal has been launched in 1991. I think the process of launching has been a very great challenge for me, both financially and personally in terms of time and effort. So could you put some of those ideas to, into the, uh, when you were attended the conference? Yes, well, in fact, I was included into the official Indian delegation primarily because of this journal, which had created quite a phenomenal stir in the world that from the poor developing country nations, the browns and the blacks could also create something which ma matched the caliber of the very fine people and scientists and environmentalists who ran these 30, 40 journals of international caliber from Europe and Japan and America. And the International Journal of Sustainable Development has now been established and I took it over a thousand copies to the Rio Earth Summit of the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development in June 1992 uh, with the Indian delegation and it was very well received. And we were able, as a delegation I think, to make a major impact by getting the conference, the Earth Summit, to incorporate some of the concerns, some of the perceptions as modifications of Agenda 21 from the third world developing countries of the South. This stage had already been set by Mr. Narasimha Rao, uh, our Prime Minister, who at the G15 meeting in Caracas in December 1991 had already uh, talked about solar energy research and South-South cooperation, which Dr. Manmohan Singh, if you remember, yes. was the Secretary General of the South Commission under Mualimu, which means teacher, yes. Julius Nayarere. And the stage had been set at the G77 meetings uh, under the Beijing Declaration. Yes. But our delegation led by the Prime Minister and the Envi Environment Minister, Mr. Kamalnath, and our own civil service, well represented as we were the NGOs also, were able to, for instance, um, make major useful changes for third world countries in the Agenda 21. He has two sons, Himraj and Rupin. Rupin Dang is doing a course in film studies at Dartmouth College, New Hampshire, USA, and in, is on a six-month sabbatical to do a film on Project Tiger. He is honorary editor of Himalayan Environment 
and has been encouraging young boys and girls to start and sustain magazines and publications like Bhagira and Chital, Journal of Wildlife Preservation, of which he was editor. What I find very satisfying about the work we have been able to do with a lot of sacrifice and a lot of hassles and struggles, both financial and editorial, about the quarterly International Journal of Sustainable Development from New Delhi, which was launched in October 1991, is that we have an editorial board and an international editorial council which is genuinely and authentically international. For example, we have Dr. Margarita de Botero of the Green University from Colombia, we have um, Jacques Bunicot from Senegal, and we have Kanakmani Dixit from Nepal and Professor Johan Galtung, the Nobel laureate from Norway, Dr. Gennady Golubev from the USSR.